In this video I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot and repair an electric guitar which won't make any sound. So this guitar is my Yamaha EG112 and I've had this guitar for almost 15 years now. I was playing this guitar the other day and all of a sudden out of nowhere it just stopped working unexpectedly. So I tried playing around with the volume control and the pickup selector and it didn't seem to matter. No matter what position I had it in, the guitar still wouldn't make any noise. I also tried jiggling the jack and unplugging it and replugging it back in again, but still couldn't get any sound to come out of the guitar. So I want to verify that the problem that I'm seeing is actually a problem with the guitar itself as opposed to a problem with the patch cord or at the amplifier. So I've got another guitar here and I'll just verify that you know everything's working up to this point here. So if I unplug this from here and plug it into this guitar, you can very quickly see that there's nothing wrong with the amplifier or the patch cord. Alright, so now I'm going to start some electronic troubleshooting. So I've got my multimeter here, and I've got it set on the 200k resistance mode, and I've got the leads from that hooked up to the end of the patch cord. So one of them, you know, clamped onto the end there, the other one hooked up to this flat section here. So right now the multimeter is showing one and then a bunch of blanks. And what that means is it's registering as infinite resistance, or in other words, the amount of resistance is outside of the range here, which is 200 kilo ohms. And the reason it's showing that is because right now I have an open circuit. I have, you know, basically the two leads from here are coming along all the way to the other end of the patch cord, and I've got the two leads basically were just sitting here, and neither of them are connected together, so it's showing that there's an infinite amount of resistance from this point here to this point here. However, if I was to take a little piece of wire and bridge that gap, so you know, hold one section here, hold the other section there, you'll now see that the multimeter is now registering zero resistance because I've now got a closed circuit. So basically what I'm using this device for is to figure out whether this guitar is not working because it's got a closed circuit or a short circuit problem inside it, meaning that two things are connected together which aren't supposed to be connected, or is it not working because it's been open circuited somewhere, or in other words, one of the connections has been broken. So before I do my test on my broken guitar, I'm just going to quickly test this guitar which I know works just to get a sense of what sort of values I should be seeing uh, from my multimeter here on a working guitar. So when I plug it in here, we see that we're getting about 16,000 or so ohms and uh, I'm sure it varies from guitar to guitar, you know, how much resistance there is within the pickups. It probably even varies depending on what I've had my pickup selector selected on. Um, but basically on a working guitar you should see some level of resistance as opposed to seeing infinite resistance or no resistance. So now to repeat the same test with my guitar which isn't working and as you can see the multimeter is still reading infinite resistance so I can conclude that this guitar has an open circuit problem. Alright so the first thing that I'm going to check is my connection with my jack for my patch cord down here. So I just got to remove these two screws so I'll be able to take a look inside of that little pocket inside of there. And looking inside there I want to make sure that neither of these wires are broken off and they don't seem to be. If you're having a closed circuit problem of course you want to make sure that neither of these two wires was touching each other but that's not the problem that I'm having here today. So in addition to that quick little visual test we want to verify that the jack itself isn't what's causing the problem so we can do the same test of the two wires which lead to the jack so I'll put the two ends of the multimeter on there and we're still seeing that there's infinite resistance which confirms that the problem exists somewhere on the other end of this wire inside the body of the guitar. So what I've got to do now is I've got to get inside the guitar and try and figure out what's going on inside there. Um, now with this guitar, the way you do this is you remove all the screws um, from around the outside here, um, but unfortunately with this design of the guitar to be able to take this plate off, you have to first remove the strings to be able to get access to the other side of this piece of plastic. Other guitars are easier to get inside of. For example, this one here, if I want to troubleshoot any of the wiring or anything that's going on back here, all I've got to do is just flip the guitar over, and as you can see, there's just three screws that I've got to remove. This plate will come off and I'll be able to get inside without even taking off the strings. Alright, so I've got my strings removed from this part of the guitar here. Um, I didn't bother taking them all the way off the guitar. I've just got them taped up over here. That's only because I'm planning on reusing these strings and it'll save me a little bit of time not having to fish them back through the holes for the bridge back here. 
So now all we've got to do is just got to take off all the screws which are holding the white pick guard down to the body here. So that'll be all the screws which go around the outside, um, except for this screw right here. This screw here is actually uh, one of the ones which relates to the pickup here. You can see that on either side of each of the pickups, there's always a screw. Those screws are just used for raising or lowering the pickups to get them to their desired height. So all the ones which go around the outside except for that one there. All right, so with all those screws removed, I'm now able to take this thing off and flip it upside down and be able to take a look inside and try and figure out what my problem is. So in my case, it's actually pretty obvious what the problem is because when I look inside the guitar, I can see that there are these loose pieces which are just sitting inside the body cavity here. And just looking at them, it's pretty obvious to me that these are supposed to be part of my selector switch. Now, having owned this guitar for 15 years, uh, I have had problems with the selector switch over the years. You know, I'd find that sometimes it wasn't working correctly and I had to jiggle it around to be able to get, you know, get a full proper connection. So it doesn't surprise me at all that that connection switch has finally, you know, completely failed and I need to replace this. So even though I'm pretty sure what my problem is here, I'm just going to kind of walk through some of the other steps that I do to troubleshoot this to help you in case your problem wasn't as obvious as the one that I'm having here. So the way this guitar is wired, you've got your jack for your patch cord down here and that goes through the body and that wire comes up through here. And that connects up with this knob here, or the potentiometer, which is your volume knob. And there's two different wires that are coming out of this bundle here. One of them goes over to here, which is connected up with a black wire, which then daisy chains to all these other things, which are inside here. And this is basically what you call your ground. That's why it's black. It's the ground of the circuit. And basically, if you are having some kind of a problem with a short circuit, somehow one of the other wires, which is not ground, is touching that so it's you know it's being grounded out so it's kind of avoiding you know going through any of the pickups which are over here. So now we'll just do the same test on this end of the wire that we did on the other end where the jack was to confirm that there isn't a broken wire inside here somewhere. So we'll put the two ends of the multimeter on there and we're still seeing infinite resistance indicating that we've got an open circuit. So next I'll check my volume knob potentiometer to make sure that's not the problem. So what this has on it, it's got an input leg on it here, an output leg, and then finally it's got a ground leg here. So this is obviously the output leg, which goes to the other side of the patch cord right here. This one here is the input leg, and it you know, eventually would go back and connect up with your pickups. And the way that the, the volume knob potentiometer works is depending on what position you have the volume knob in, it'll limit the amount of current that can go from the input over to the output. So if I have my volume knob so that it's set in the all the way turned up position, if I then connect my multimeter up to these two legs, the input and the output, you can see that it's registering pretty much zero resistance between those two, which is how it should be functioning if it's working correctly. Now alternately, if I turn my volume knob all the way down, it'll now function as basically not letting any current be able to get through there, so it basically should be basically infinite resistance. So if I put it on there between the two legs, we can see that it's still registering as infinite resistance. So if I turn this volume knob all the way up, I just simply need to verify that by connecting one of these legs over to the ground over here, that I'm still seeing an open circuit connecting up with the other side there. And that's what I'm seeing. This guitar also has another potentiometer here, which is for the tone knob. And the way that works is, you can see there's a small little capacitor here and by adjusting the position of the potentiometer, it will allow an amount of current to flow straight through from the, from the input here right to ground through this capacitor, and this capacitor changes the sound um, that comes out of the guitar. It changes you know, the tone, it changes the treble versus the bass that's coming out. Since my guitar is, is having a problem uh, with an open circuit, it's very unlikely that the problem exists within here because if the problem was here, I still should be able to get some kind of a sound out of the guitar. I um, just wouldn't be able to use the tone knob to change that sound. However, if it was a short circuit problem that I was having with my guitar, then it's certainly possible that it could exist within here because you've got your input line right here and your ground right here, and if somehow those were getting shorted, then you wouldn't be getting any kind of sound out of your guitar. So now to continue with my troubleshooting, if I follow the other wire which goes to the input um, of the volume knob, it goes over to here, which is my selector switch for selecting between the different pickups. So it connects up with the middle leg of the switch there, and then there are also three other legs over here, and basically by selecting different positions of the switch, it's selecting which of these different leads is it going to be pulling the, the signal from. 
and each of these different leads, they go to different pickups and they've been color coded. Uh, the red wire goes to the neck pickup on my guitar, the blue one goes to the middle pickup, and the yellow one goes to the bridge pickup, which is the humbucking pickup on this guitar. So to continue troubleshooting, I can put my multimeter on here and we're gonna verify that the problem doesn't exist somewhere within this wire. So if I put you know multimeter on ground and I put the other side over here, I'm still seeing that there is infinite resistance, so there's still an open circuit somewhere you know beyond all the stuff that we've tested. So to confirm that the problem that I'm seeing actually exists within the switch, I can check um, basically if there's any resistance between this point and any of these other ones, of course depending on what position I have the switch in, right now I have it switched so that it should be connected up with this one here. Basically the switch is supposed to bridge the gap between here and here, and in this case I'm still seeing open circuit, it's infinite resistance, so the switch is not working correctly. Another way that I can verify this is I can do a test where I'm completely avoiding this part of the circuit and we're just gonna be testing the pickups right on. So I can pretty much just put my uh, multimeter right here on the ground and then I can connect the other side with any of the different legs of the switch over here and you'll see that I'm registering about, looks like 6,000 ohms. So it's showing that there's some level of resistance as opposed to seeing open circuit or closed circuit. As I said before, it will vary from one gu guitar to another how much resistance you're gonna see. So now we'll just check the one below and see what it's registering as. And it's also registering about the same amount of uh, resistance. And then finally I can check the other pickup and verify that it's working. And this one's got a higher value because it's a humbucking pickup. So these two, the other two are identical pickups, so it makes sense that they're showing values which are uh, more similar to each other. So I picked up a replacement switch for the broken one that I have here. And as you can see, they're not identical to one another. They don't look exactly the same, but they are compatible. The holes are drilled in the same spots and the switch has the same number of positions on it. All right, so I've got my soldering iron heated up now and I'm gonna start by taking off the connection to this ground here, just simply by heating up the solder and pulling on it. Next, I'll take the one which goes to the input line, this red one here, should the same thing, just hold my soldering iron on there let the solder melt, and it should pull right off like that. And I'll do the same for these ones down here. I'm just gonna use some needle nose pliers so my hand won't get in the way of you being able to see me do this. There's that one. One below it. And finally, the last wire, which is down here. Like so. So now that I've got everything removed from the switch, I can flip this back over again. And all I need to do is just remove these two screws to be able to take the switch off. And this little plastic piece off the top should just pull right off. And now when I flip this back over, the old switch is completely removed from the guitar. Before I install the new switch on the guitar, I'm gonna melt some solder onto all the connection points so it'll be easier once I've got it on there. On the new switch, I can take off the plastic knob and remove the screws from their holes. Insert the switch through the hole and attach the screws from the other side. I'll flip this back over and then we can solder on all of our leads. I'll start with the ground connection on the back here. Next I'll put on this red wire which is the output of the switch which goes over to the volume knob potentiometer. And let the solder cool and there we've got that. The next one to go on is this one here which comes from the yellow bundle which goes over to the bridge pickup or the humbucking pickup on this guitar. So connect that one up with the switch. Again, let the solder cool before taking the pliers off. That's a good connection. Now I'll connect up the one from the blue wire which goes to the middle pickup. And you can see having that solder on there ahead of time really makes it a lot easier for soldering these points on. And finally the one from the red wire which comes over from the neck pickup. And with that all joined back together, I can flip this over and we can do some final tests with our multimeter to make sure everything's working the way it's supposed to. So now we can repeat our original test from the beginning with a multimeter and a patch cord. So as you can see on the multimeter, we're now getting a value of resistance, which is not zero, and it's also not infinite resistance, which means that hopefully this thing is now working correctly. So when I have my switch in this position here, the guitar should only be taking signal from my neck pickup, this one right here, and as you can see, it's giving us a value of about 5.6 thousand ohms. When I have the switch in the next position here, the guitar is supposed to take signal from both the middle pickup and the neck pickup at the same time, 
And this has got a lower resistance value because you've got two resistors which are sitting in parallel to one another. The next position of the switch will take signal only from the middle pickup here. As you can see, it has a similar resistance value as the neck pickup does. The next position of the switch is supposed to take signal from the bridge pickup as well as the middle pickup. And as you can see, it's got a fairly low resistance because you've got, again, two resistors which are in parallel to one another. And finally, on this position, we're only picking from the bridge pickup, the humbucking pickup right here, and it's got a, a resistance value which is a little bit higher than these other two. I, I suspect it's because it's a double coil pickup or a humbucking pickup. Another thing that you can check before you put your strings back on is you can plug your guitar back into the amplifier, and if you take something metallic like the screwdriver and you tap on the pickups, there's a fairly loud tapping sound that comes out of the amplifier if you wire things up correctly. Right now, again, I've selected so I only should be seeing things out of this pickup here. If I tap on the other pickups, you can hear that there's no tapping sound. But on this one, there's a very loud tapping sound. You can do that and test all of them to make sure that they're working when they're supposed to be and not when they're not. You can also use this test to make sure your volume knob is working correctly. So now that I'm pretty sure everything's going to work correctly, I can put all my screws back on and put the strings back on the guitar and give it a proper test. So that concludes my tutorial showing you how to troubleshoot and repair a non-functioning electric guitar. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.